air coolers or all-in-one liquid coolers, 240 or 360 mm AIOs. In this video I'll try to answer that for you. I'll be testing on the 9800X3D stock settings and with precision boost in order to increase the top speed by 200 MHz but without any undervolting to stress the coolers. To see the performance difference I'll be using the same exact fans on all three solutions. To be more precise the Cooler Master Mobius 120p ARGB model that I have for some time now. These fans can reach up to 2400 RPM and are better than the solutions found on two coolers and a bit worse than on one. Before moving forward, I would like to know how did you choose your current cooling solution? What were the reasons behind your decision? Let me know in the comment sections of this video. For testing, I'll be using the Phantom Spirit 120SC as the air cooler to compare to the Liquid Freezer Free 240 ARGB and the Cooler Master Atmos 360 as the AIOs. I'll be using two fan speeds, 100% for both cooler and intake fans and a silent mode which sets the CPU fans to 65% while the intake fans are spinning at 55%. I'll be using Firmark CPU burner to stress the CPU and Hardware Info 64 to lock the temperature and the clock speed maintained during the test run. This will simulate real-world intensive tasks like, for example, CPU video encoding. The averages that you'll see are obtained from free runs, each one of 10 minutes long. For mixed workloads, I picked Cyberpunk 2077. The runs are of 7 minutes each and the results are the averages of free runs. The fans were set to standard in BIOS. I have increased the power limit of the 7900XTX by 15%, thus reaching a maximum of 420 watts. Increasing the power limit means that the GPU will dump more heat inside the PC case, thus influencing the temperature of one tested cooler, but more on this later in the video. Let's not waste any more time and see the temperature results and clock speeds when stress testing the CPU. First, we will start with the silent fan speed setting where the CPU is at stock settings. Don't forget that all three coolers are using the exact same fans. The room temperature was around 21 degrees Celsius. All coolers managed to keep the 9800X3D cool without an issue, though we can see that the AIOs have an advantage here. Even though the air cooler is 5 degrees hotter than the 240 AIO and almost 7 degrees hotter than the 360 AIO, it has ample cooling ability as the thermal throttle limit of this CPU is around 95 degrees Celsius. This can be reflected by looking at the clock speeds, as there are only 5 MHz between the 360 AIO and the air cooler. Increasing the CPU maximum speed by 200 MHz, we can see that the air cooler is not able to keep the CPU cool as it reaches 95 degrees, at least when using the silent settings, while the other two coolers manage to keep the CPU under the thermal throttle threshold. This is reflected in the CPU clock speed sustained during the stress test. The Arctic Liquid Freezer Free 240 and the Cooler Master Atmos 360 AIOs have a small advantage of 34 and 40 MHz over the air cooler. To be honest, I was expecting to see a bigger lead here. Now, let's see the performance of these coolers when the CPU and intake fans are set to full speed. As we can see, when the 9800X3D stock settings are used, there is a 5 degree difference between the best and the worst performing. Looking at the CPU speed, this is more or less the same as it was with the silent settings. When enabling PBO in order to increase the CPU speed by 200 MHz, paired with maximum fan speed, all CPU coolers sit below the thermal limit. Looking at the CPU speed, we can see a minor advantage for the 360 AIO managing to keep the CPU clock at around 28 MHz more than the air cooler. To be honest, this is a small advantage. So, it seems that the best choice for heavy CPU tasks is a bigger cooler, but only when overclocking. Let's move now to the mixed workloads, in this case gaming. First, let's have a look at the average temperatures and clocks when the CPU is with its stock settings. 
all coolers maintain the CPU cool and are quiet as the temperature is below 60 degrees, with the air cooler hovering around 51 degrees Celsius, while the two IIOs are evenly matched at around 45 degrees. As we can see, the average clock speed is the same with all coolers, thus you will not see any performance difference at all. When enabling PBO to achieve a 200 MHz max clock speed, the dynamics don't change. It's true that the temperature has increased a bit, but nothing alarming. All free cooling solutions can handle the clock speed increase without an issue, as you can be seen. One thing to point out is that the air cooler sucks warm air that the GPU exhausts in the case, while the AIOs benefit a bit more from the intake fans, at least the front part of the AIOs. So, how to choose between these cooling solutions, as all perform good in normal circumstances? In my opinion, for most use cases, a good air cooler should be the first choice. On average, these are cheaper, most, but not all, easier to maintain, and the safest. And most importantly, these can fit in most PC cases. Keep in mind that you'll need good intake fans to provide fresh cool air for the PC's components, but this applies to all types of coolers. Only the fans can break and those can be swapped with others in no time. With that said, air has a few limitations, of which one is cooling capacity. I would pair an air cooler with CPUs that can use up to 175 watts, so a 8 or 12 core CPU. After that, in my opinion, it's better to go with an AIO. Another limitation is that depending on the air cooler heatsink, you may encounter memory compatibility issues. Most modern air coolers don't have this issue. Even if you have a high-profile memory kit, you can easily lift a bit the front CPU fan and you'll have clearance. But depending on the PC case, sometimes this can cause issues with the side panel not closing properly. So have that in mind. Also, some air coolers will hinder the RGB from the memory kit. This can be a blessing or a curse. Now, when to choose the 240 AIO over a 361? Well, usually when you have a smaller, more compact PC case, and space is an issue. To be honest, if you have the room for the bigger ones, I will always choose the 360 AIO over the 241. In my opinion, 240 AIOs perform close to top air coolers, and some models are even cheaper than the expensive top air coolers, with only the best ones, like the Arctic Liquid Freezer Free, having a somewhat clear advantage over the best air solutions. The biggest disadvantage of an AIO is that it has multiple failing points. Fans can break, as on air coolers, but there is a pump that can stop working. A friend of mine had this issue and in rare occasions, leakage, which is the worst. When considering an AIO, my advice is to get one that has a good warranty policy from a good company. Even though AIOs nowadays are reliable and you don't hear horror stories over the internet, it just needs to happen to one from 100,000 people and if it's you, it sucks. This is why it's good to buy an AIO from a reputable brand that has a long warranty. Another thing to point out is that after the warranty has expired, I would recommend to stop using it. Because if there will be a leakage, the company will not cover the cost of the GPU and or any other component that may fail due to that. Also, whatever solution you go with, it needs maintenance. You will need to clean it of dust from time to time. There is no way to avoid it. Now, before wrapping things up, keep in mind that the performance that you saw in this chart for these coolers is not the actual one if you go out and buy one. The Phantom Spirit 120 SE and the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 240 ARGB have weaker fans that spin at 1500 and 2000, while the ones used for testing can go up to 2400. The Cooler Master Atmos 360 has faster spinning fans than the ones in this video, so it will perform a bit better overall. And that's it for this video. I hope this will help you in choosing the right cooling option based on your needs. If you liked the video and found it helpful, hit the thumbs up button, drop a comment below and consider subscribing to the channel. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.